Hi, and welcome to the second episode of the Clementine and Roses podcast. Thank you so much for joining in today. How are you all? How's everyone doing? Um, personally, I'm doing great. It's really pretty outside. It's 18 degrees today. It's really nice and hot. So it's put me in a really good mood. Before we start today's episode, I wanted to thank everyone who listened to the first episode of the podcast and anyone who's shared it on Instagram or who sent me a message or who gave me any kind of feedback. I really appreciated it Um, and it made me very happy to see that so many people were enthusiastic about the podcast and its release. Anyone who left a rating or a review or who gave a five star review on Apple that was really appreciated as well as it helps um, the podcast to grow a lot. So I just wanted to thank you all for all of the positivity that was surrounded with the launch of the podcast. So that was really cool. Thank you. Life update. Um, There's not much special that's been happening at the moment. I'm still doing my internship Uh, So I've been working all week, Um, however Wednesday I did have a day off and I played tennis for the first time since a while so that felt really good and I made some cupcakes Um, so Wednesday was a fun day and then I've just been working, I'm recording this on Saturday uh, and I'm not doing much this weekend, tomorrow I may be going to Paris for a walk, Um, everything's close but we thought we'd just have a nice little walk in a park or something so that should be fun so three things i'm grateful for or that i accomplished this week the first thing i'm really grateful i accomplished this week is that i finished the first bridget jones book it was so good it's so funny um i'm really pleased i read it if you haven't read bridget jones and you like reading definitely give it a shot um otherwise you can always watch the movies but personally i prefer to read a book before watching the movies um but yeah the book is really funny and i was very happy to finish it it's always so so refreshing when you finish a book plus that means i get to start a new one which is bridget Jones number two but still it's very fun um yep and so i'm i think i think there are four books when I finish with all of them, then then I'll watch the movies. I'm not sure if there are four movies. Wait, maybe there are. Anyway, when I'm finished with the books, I will watch the movies. Ooh, something else. During quarantine, my mum showed me um, that the author of Bridget Jones... I can't remember. What's her name? Oh, Helen Fielding. She wrote a kind of segment or a kind of uh, text which was Bridget Jones perspective on confinement and how she was dealing with it and everything and it was very funny so if you are a fan of Bridget Jones and you want to go and read that mm, that was really cool to see her kind of perspective on everything yep second thing I'm very grateful I accomplished this week is that I went to play tennis again um after confinement I used to go and play tennis every single day and it was really fun I was getting better because I'm not I'm not very good at tennis um I mostly do it because it's fun but I was getting better and better and then um when school started again I completely stopped and I haven't played since September but I started again and it was really fun um it's just a fun activity and sport activity that I like to do so I'm very happy I did that and I think I'm going to start doing it more regularly um finally a last thing I'm very grateful I did this week I finished a very important task and a very long task I had to do for my internship it took me about two weeks and I'm so happy I finished it 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 was just very time consuming it was super interesting i had to i basically had to do research on other brands that are similar to the brand i'm working for to see what they do like on instagram or pinterest um on facebook and then report back to 
um, the person for whom I'm working to kind of see what works for them and what doesn't. So that was interesting, but just very time consuming. I don't think I've talked about this, but so I'm doing an internship. I'm not sure if I can say the company's name, so I won't. But, but um, I'm doing an internship in marketing and communication. It's for um, a natural perfume company. And basically I look after, I work on their Instagram account. I work on design. I work on new projects that are coming up. Um, I work on writing newsletters and articles and it's very fun. I love what I'm doing and the people who I work with are super nice. So I think I'm very, very lucky to have found an internship, especially with COVID. Well, a lot of people are having a really hard time finding an internship and I think I'm very lucky because um well first of all I found one secondly it's in a domain and a sector that I love that I'm passionate about so it makes my job way easier with covid most of my work I do it at home sometimes go to Paris for meetings and such but basically everything I do is from home yep so those are the three things I'm grateful that I accomplished this week. So, okay, let's get on with the episode. So this episode is going to be about time management. Um, So trying to find a balance in between schoolwork, if you have a student job, relationships, um, self-care, family time, a bit of everything. Because I don't know about you, but as a student, I often find it really hard to do everything you want to do in a day and sometimes it can feel really overwhelming um and yeah there are some days I feel like I've accomplished nothing so this is an episode that's going to help you find or I hope or at least give you some tips or some inspiration into finding a lifestyle and a routine that work for you and I think it can take some time to find something that works uh, for everyone and that fits into your schedule. Uh, it can take a lot of trial and error, but once you get it down, it's really rewarding. I'm going to give you some tips. I think there are like uh, six or seven on how I manage, or at least how I try to get everything I want to get done in the day. I am a bit of a perfectionist and I love getting things done. If there's too much on my plate and I haven't been able to do everything, it really stresses me out because I'm like, oh my god, I'm never going to have the time to do this. When can I do this? So that's why I've always liked to plan ahead and organize my life. Um, I know that going with the flow and just seeing what life gets you is very good. And I'm trying to work on it and to be more easygoing. But I still love planning and organizing and getting things structured because it just helps me feel less stressed and less anxious for the week and for or for the month or for the school year basically and for everything I do. This episode is going to be a bit about how to manage best your time and I think it basically comes down to two things which are routines and organization which are two topics that I'm going to dive into in this second episode so let's start okay my first tip would be to find two or three things that you would love to do every day and to implement them into routines so for example let's say you would love to be able to read uh, 20 minutes every day well you could implement that into either your morning or your evening routine like you maybe you have to wake up 20 minutes earlier but you kind of block that time to implement things that are very important to you and that you would feel satisfied with if you manage to do them during the day personally i like waking up earlier in the morning to get more stuff done i'm not a night person after (laughs) after 7 or 6 p.m my brain shuts down so i can't work 
Um, but then you have to see what works for you. Some people will work way better in the evening and like getting things done in the evening. So again, it's on trial and error and you really have to find what works for you. Um, I think that routines are so important. I can't emphasize it enough. The days where I manage to do my routine, I just feel a lot more productive during the day because I tell myself, even if I haven't done anything else during the day, at least I've done my routine. Of course, everyone's going to have off days. Like some days you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, oh my god, I really don't have the time to do my routine. I can't do my routine today. And that's fine. Life isn't rigid. And so I don't think your routine should be that rigid either. But um, having a routine that you can turn to or that you can do when you have the time is really good, I think. Routines are actually good for many different reasons. First of all, routines bring structure and organization to your day. So if you have something that you do every morning or that you do every evening, it kind of uh, familiarizes your body and your mind into either uh, getting more energized and getting ready for the day or on the other hand, if you're doing it in the evening, winding down and getting ready to sleep. So morning or evening routines, I think they really give structure to your day and they can help you get through the day. Routines are also a moment where you kind of do whatever you feel like doing or things that are more for yourself. Like you could implement so many things in your routine. It can be sport, like you could go running, you could do yoga, you could meditate, you could journal, you could read, you could clean your room, you could water your plants, you could make yourself a nice cup of tea a routine can be as easy as just getting up and making your bed and that's your morning routine because at least you've done it and then you have a nice clean space another thing that's really good with routines which is kind of what i was saying before it's um kind of like a security blanket in the sense that if everything isn't going well in your day then you can tell yourself well at least i've done my routine and that's done the last thing that's really great about routines is that they help you reach um, objectives. Sorry, they help you reach goals. For example, with the 20 minute reading every morning, imagine you really want to finish a book that you got for Christmas or something. Well, just give yourself 20 minutes to read every day or even 10 minutes. At the end, 10 minutes plus 10 minutes plus 10 minutes plus 10 minutes. It's gonna, at some point you're gonna finish your book and then you're gonna be really pleased with yourself. And this can be implemented in everything. Like it doesn't have to just be something physical. It can also be mentally. Like if you take 10 minutes every morning to meditate or to journal, then at some point you'll get better at it and you'll perfection it. And you'll really be able to reach a goal if it's a physical or if it's more a spiritual goal. At the end, you'll get there. One thing I did want to touch on is that routines, I think you should be careful and maybe not put too many things in your routine because it can easily be overwhelming like if you're if you say okay now every evening i'm gonna run 30 minutes and then i'm gonna read a book for 30 minutes but you haven't run in like years and you haven't been reading in a few months either maybe that's too strong maybe start with like okay i'm gonna go for a 15 minute run and then I'm going to read for 15 minutes and then with time you can get better and do more and more and more but at the beginning it shouldn't be overwhelming because otherwise you'll never do it and you'll stop and well you may not but a lot of the times what happens is that when you start a routine you put too much on yourself and it gets overwhelming and then you decide to stop so maybe just take it easy implement two or three things that you really really would like to do every day and try to do them in the morning or in the evening and as i said before maybe it's just as simple as making your bed or brushing your teeth and that's perfect it's your routine it will bring structure to your day anyway if you don't have any inspiration for your morning or your evening routines there are so many different ways you 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 can find things to do uh, first of all i would recommend just like sitting with yourself giving yourself 10 minutes and thinking about goals or things you'd love to accomplish in the morning or in the evening and if you can't find anything just go on pinterest there's so much inspiration just type in a uh, morning routine ideas or evening routine ideas or aesthetic morning routine ideas 
you'll find loads and loads of things. Um, you can also watch YouTube videos on it. Um, there are some cool Instagram accounts that are super inspiring and who give loads of advice on this kind of thing. I was also thinking at some point of doing an episode all about recommendations like my personal favourite YouTube accounts, Instagram accounts, my favourite books, my favourite clothing companies, my favourite uh, songs, my favourite um, other podcasts I love, um, what else? Series I love, films I love. So, yep, I may do that at some point. I feel like it could be interesting. Maybe not. We'll see. My next tip, tip number two, is that every morning or the evening before the day, you could write three or four things that you would love to accomplish the next day. The three things don't have to be super big because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with too much. So maybe it's, I want to finish a dissertation that I've started, I want to start this book for school, and I want to take my dog for a walk. There are two kind of big things, which is the dissertation and reading the book, and then you have walking the dog, which is kind of easier and more accessible. And like that, when you tick them off, you'll feel way better and satisfied and as if you've had a productive day. It also helps with time management and everything because you know what you have to do for that day and you can start getting it done. So personally, this is something I do every evening before the next day. I write three big things I want to accomplish and then on the side I'll put extra little tasks that I can do if I have the time but if I don't do them then that's fine. At least I would have done the three big in quotes things that I have to do that day and you can also implement this task into your week say okay this week there are three big things I want to do first of all I want to finish this homework I want to do this and I want to do this and then you break them down the three big goals of the week you can break them down into little goals that you implement every day and it kind of makes working easier because you're breaking things down which leads me to my next tip which is to decompose big tasks into a lot of small uh, little ones this is personally what i do when i have homework or big essays i have to do instead of writing on my to-do list uh do essay number four i'll write uh, write introduction for essay, write part one, write part two, uh, write my conclusion and then it just makes things easier and you feel like at the uh, at the end of the day as if you've done more because if on your your to-do list you only have do dissertation and at the end of the day you only get to highlight one thing off your list well you kind of feel in a way unproductive whereas if you have four things which is write introduction, write part one, write part two, write conclusion then every hour two hours say you get to tick something off and then it feels really satisfying and you're like okay I'm getting somewhere I've already done all of this I only have this left to do and I find it a lot more motivating so yep that's kind of a quick tip but it's to really instead of taking one big task and making it feel overwhelming dividing it into lots of little tasks that are more accessible and easy to do and that you can spread either on one day or on a few days. Okay, tip number four, I think. Um, It seems kind of simple, but I find it very effective, is to write down everything you have to do in your calendar. Important dates, um, if it's appointments, seeing your friends, seeing your family, homework that needs to get done, uh, even if you want to go running or you have a sports session that you want to do write it in your calendar like that it's there and you know you have to do it personally i have a few calendars i have a google calendar that's online that i like to color code i just find it easier to to read uh but i also write i i like writing down what i have to do for the day and my appointments i also have an agenda that i write everything in Also, something else I'd like to say is that personally, I would recommend 
getting an agenda or a calendar where you can see what's planned for all of the week like per page it isn't just one day it's uh, all five days of the week or seven days of the week or even if you have a, a smaller calendar but that has every day of the month like that when you're starting your your week or your month you can see what you have planned and you're not overwhelmed suddenly by turning the page and saying oh crap tomorrow i have to do this and you haven't done any planning for it whereas if you have a calendar that, that gives more of an overview of your week or of your month then you can prepare yourself to do all of the different um, tasks that are on it uh, another tip that is linked to calendars and to do lists and all that kind of stuff is to make it pretty and aesthetic this may seem kind of babyish but i find it very true and it works very well if your calendar is nice and you want to look at it then you'll be way more productive and way more motivated to work if you look at your calendar and it's black and white and there are scribbles everywhere and you don't it's not clear you don't really know what you have to do and you don't understand and it's just a jumble of words it can be really overwhelming they're like oh i have so much to do i can't do everything whereas if everything's like colored or put into different boxes or organized then it's so easier to just sit down and do the things you want to do because it's already organized in the way and it makes you want to work um you could if this kind of things interest you maybe invest in a really nice journal or a really nice agenda a nice pen um, but something that you want to look at and not something that you're gonna shy away from my next tip I think it's tip number five is to set your day up and divide your day into little fragments I like to do this because I give myself a task for each each fragment of the day and I divide my day into one two three four uh, five five different times so for me I have early morning so this is before breakfast and personally during this time of the day is when I'm gonna implement my morning routine so it's when I'm gonna clean my room it's when I'm gonna do my yoga and I'm gonna do my journaling and then I'm gonna sit down and have my breakfast then it leads me to the second part of my morning which is my after breakfast moment um, this is where I start my first task for example if I have to start a dissertation I have to write an introduction for a dissertation then this is when I'm gonna start doing it and I'll do that until lunch and then I'll have a break lunch break and then after lunch it's gonna be my third period of the day um, so here I implement another type of homework and this is maybe from like one or two until four or yeah until four and then I feel like I enter another phase of my day which is late afternoon this is the time of my day where I like going for a walk with my dog or going running or playing a society game or doing something different than isn't necessarily work and then the last moment of my day is my evening so this is when I wind down I prepare for the next day I have dinner I spend some time with my family and my friends and I find that dividing your day into different segments really helps you plan and know what you have to do uh, at every moment well not at every moment but in every slot per day this is just something that really works for me is dividing my day up into lots of small little things because I just find it way easier than big tasks but this is this is what works for me I like giving myself time slots and I like sticking to them the best I can but you don't have to do this this is just my advice um, lots of people don't really like being sticking to schedules and they kind of just go with the flow and that's fine these are just my tips to be more productive and to get more done in the in your day um, but of course this isn't gonna work for everyone uh, and I fully understand that so just a little disclaimer 
but anyway I just find that giving time slots really helps helps me set up my day and know what I have to do sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have my to-do list and I'm like okay well what am I going to start doing and then it's already 11 and I've done nothing because I've been procrastinating all morning so if I give myself time slots then I know what I have to do when I wake up after breakfast after lunch late afternoon and evening and it just makes it easier for me it's just a little tip to make it easier for you if you want my next tip is not necessarily a management tip um, but it's more for productivity and for studying I recommend that you always have a glass of water or a glass of tea or a tea stand uh, next to you when you're working I just find that when you're dehydrated it's so hard to work I you can't concentrate and honestly giving yourself a glass of water or drinking a glass of water is really like fuel and personally it just makes my brain work 10 times better I feel like I can think clearer and everything and it really works for me so I always like having a glass or a cup or um, water bottle next to me when I work yep that really works for me and another little thing when you're studying sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of music this isn't for everyone because it can be very distracting I don't like listening to music with words because then I just want to sing along and I find it too distracting so either I'll listen to coffee shop music or I'll listen to classical music but I do prefer something without words because I just find it easier those were kind of two study tips maybe one day I'll do an episode on revision and study tips if you're interested in that then let me know I could definitely do something like that because I have lots of little tips anyway I think that that wraps up today's episode um thank you so much for listening again to my second episode makes me very happy um if you enjoyed the episode like last time you can share it in your story if you want on instagram or give it a rating and a review that really helps you can also follow along the podcast instagram which is clementine and roses dot podcast on instagram on that instagram i give news and updates on the upcoming episodes Uh, Just this week I did a poll on what this episode should be. I gave two options, either an episode on time management or an option um, which was 20 tips to be more environmentally friendly. Obviously time management won, but those of you who voted for 20 tips to be more environmentally friendly, don't worry. I'm thinking that will be next week's episode because it's something that's very important to me. Um, and I'd really like to share it with you guys so yep the Instagram's kind of my hub Um, so if you want any updates that's definitely the place to go thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week bye